everyone. Uh, thank you for watching this video and joining us uh, for our meeting regarding National Voter Registration Week of Action. Uh, we just wanted to go over a couple of things uh, about what you can expect this week and next week uh, and just how to make sure that you're really ready and set up for success. So uh, this is myself, Maria Bruno with Cohio. Joan Van Beesler with uh, UUJO, and Liam Walsh, also with Cohio's program, Ohio Votes. Uh, and so on today's call, we're just gonna briefly discuss what to expect this week, uh, what to expect next week, uh, a reminder about uh, some of the resources, and uh, we had in the last call done a peer share, which was really great. So we might uh, highlight a couple uh, of the programs that we're really most excited about this coming, uh, this coming NBRD week of action. So what to expect this week. Um, first of all, we have our happy hour refreshers, one of which we just had. Uh, and this is just supposed to be a casual environment that you can come get a brief uh, brush up on some of the voting rules and structures and uh, get a little bit into the weeds, but, but while you're just, you know, drinking with your friends. So uh, it's a good opportunity to take a break from your day while also getting yourself ready for next week. Hopefully we can do both of those things at once. Um, today was voter registration. Tomorrow will be absentee ballot, uh, absentee voting. Wednesday will be how elections work. So the rules, election protection types of ballots, all of those uh, things that relate to how the election process actually works from step to step. And then Thursday we'll do civic engagement, which is basically, okay, so I registered and I voted, now what? Uh, and so just a little bit of a conversation about some other ways that people can get involved moving forward. So first, what you should be doing for this week is, uh, no matter whether you're having a virtual or in-person event, is prepare your event. Uh, and that is advertising, first of all. Uh, you wanna make sure that you've got a good turnout and that you've got, you're reaching as many people as possible. Uh, the biggest uh, point of National Voter Registration Week of Action is to raise public awareness about how easy it is to register to vote and to be a active participant in the democratic process. Um, and so we wanna make sure we're really highlighting all of the work happening all around the state uh, to forward that goal. So make sure that you're adding your event to the NVRD calendar. Uh, and we will also include that link in the follow-up email. Uh, make sure that you're telling your tenants, your clients, clients, your neighbors, anyone that you'd like to attend your event, make sure you're letting them know that it's happening. Uh, so that can be through letters to the editor, through your social media, email blasts and newsletters. Uh, we have posters that you can use or you can make your own. Uh, and you can also even contact your own uh, network using Outvote, uh, which you must you would have to uh, type in your own script, but if that's a tool that you've been using for voter registration and you're already sort of uh, familiar with how it operates, then that's also just another way that you can reach out to folks uh, with some ease. And Joan, I think you had uh, something to add. Yes, you'd have to use the code for the campaign, 900156. I'm sorry, you're and right. We'll, and we'll include that in the follow-up email yeah. as well. We'll include the correct code because that probably is the better one to know, probably. Um, okay, so if you're having an in-person event, uh, here are some things that you should be doing this week or think at least um, making a plan to do prior to your event. Uh, so that's pick up literature and materials from your regional liaisons. That includes some PPE such as masks and hand sanitizers. Uh, we've also got posters and buttons and pens and um, I'm sure that most of the regional liaisons are just um, handing things out at first come first serve. Um, so make sure that you're reaching out to them and letting them know about what needs you have to make sure that you have everything um, for your event. So that might be posters, it might be criminal conviction rights cards, um, it could be stickers for kids, uh, you know, there's all sorts of fun stuff. So make sure that you're reaching out to them. Um, make sure that you're training your staff, make sure that you have reached out to your regional liaison. Um, who can provide a little bit more context and more information about your specific training options. You can also attend uh, one of the events that's already on our uh, either social media page or our, our shared calendar. There's lots of trainings going on all around the state. 
and luckily uh, the silver lining of this pandemic is many of them, if not all of them are, are also virtual. So you can uh, take advantage of other regions training opportunities as well. Um, and we also have a quiz that you can take afterwards that uh, we will send the link out in the follow up email um, that just has a couple questions to make sure you've got some of the basics down before uh, you reach out to other folks. Um, and then also order the food and get other event supplies. If it's a back to school event, time to get school supplies. If it's a free pizza, time to think about how much pizza you need to order. Uh, we do have some mini grants available, and so we'll share that link as well in the follow-up email. Uh, but if you're looking for some financial support, um, you can uh, request some through that application. Uh, but also just remember, we do have a lot of stuff available free of charge just through our network. Um, so some of the supplies and such, hopefully we can uh, provide you with so you don't have to take on a huge uh, burden. If you have a virtual event, your planning is a lot simpler. <laughs> uh, the benefit of the virtual event is there's no physical space that you need to prepare. So the big thing is just make sure everyone has their uh, calendar invite and uh, the sign in information for the call and that anyone who is participating in the facilitating of the event kind of knows their roles. So, um, you know, training staff on the voting basics, also doing some tech training if needed, uh, just making sure that everyone knows what their responsibilities are. Um, then what's the week of national voter registration going to look like? We're going to be very, very busy, busy, busy bees. So uh, we're going to need you to show us what you're up to. Like I said, the main point of National Voter Registration Day is in fact to um, raise awareness and uh, promote opportunities to register to vote. So the biggest way we can do that is just be loud about what we're doing and why we're doing it and why it's important. So please feel free to share uh, your events and your activities and all of uh, the reasons that you're participating in the election. Some hashtags you can use are National Voter Registration Day, Your Vote Matters, and Why Ohio Votes. All three of those should pull up a, a nice collection of some other folks doing similar work across the state and even sometimes across the country. Um, so final prep during the week of National Voter Registration Day. Um, again, make sure that the, the staff is trained and roles are assigned. Continue to get the word out. Uh, work through the sign-in and tracking mechanisms, regardless of whether you are doing a virtual or in-person event, you're going to want to keep track of, you know, who you interact with. Um, and for our sake, for our data collection, uh, we actually use data for research purposes only, um, but we use it so that we can suss out basically how our collective impact uh, is working. So is the type of outreach that we are doing effective? Is it getting people to actually be more likely to show up to the polls? Is it actually making a dent in the registration numbers? Um, and so we can do that by being able to match voter files with the folks that we interact with, which is public record. The only information that we need uh, for our purposes is the name and address or if you don't want to send, you know, uh, photocopies of any forms, that's a good way to track your progress with, with little um, obligation on that end. Um, and then obviously, if you have an online event, you'll have to figure out how to track that. Um, often registration links can have, you know, some, some extra fill in so you can decide what information you want to collect, but definitely think that through up front because there's nothing worse, and I've done it myself, with finishing an event and going, I have no idea who just showed up to that uh, or how many people there were or if anyone had anything to take away from the activity. So um, the more you can keep track of that in real time, the less of a headache you'll have on the back end. And then also prep post-event plans. Who's going to clean up? Who's going to get the filled out voter registration forms to the Board of Elections and or to us? Um, who is going to make sure the building's locked on way out? Um, and who's going to, if you do fill out a mini grant, um, it, who's going to fill out that survey and, and follow up um, with that information? So, you know, just again, make sure that you're thinking through all the way to the end and even after. Uh, for in-person events, it'll just be a lot of logistical planning, getting doors unlocked, food delivered, uh, gathering supplies and materials, um, getting forms back to the regional liaisons. Uh, for virtual, it's going to be a lot more tech. Uh, prep the tech, make sure the hosts and panelists know the basic functions. I think by now we all are shockingly well-versed in most of the video conferencing technology. 
Um, but if anyone isn't, make sure that they've got uh, a basic understanding of what they need to be doing. Uh, make sure that you have all the appropriate links to the things that you reference. A lot of times in the course of your conversation, you'll go, we have this resource, we have, you know, how many links have we mentioned? Um, and so if you have those ready, you can just throw them in the chat as you go. So folks can keep up with the conversation and you can also send in follow up emails, but it just saves you some time uh, during the actual event. Um, figure out how to live stream. It's free and it's a really great way to get, get more um, visibility for the work that you're already doing. And then also make sure there's someone to field online questions and help individuals with tech problems. So it's nice to have sort of a, a secondhand man who can, uh, you know, take someone off to the side and help them get their sound to work or, you know, see if Facebook uh, Live has any questions um, coming up. So, you know, it's helpful to have at least one other person who's helping to monitor that. Um, and then on the day of the event, hopefully if you've done all of these prep pieces, the day of the event will be pretty smooth. Um, this is the fun part. We want it to keep being the fun part. Uh, and so, you know, we want to plan out all as much as we possibly can uh, so that during the event, you can just have a good time, take pictures and videos, tag folks, uh, film testimonials on why they're voting. Um, and we also will have some, some resources available for numbers you can call if there is a question in the field for a voting question that you don't know the answer to. Um, we do know that the, the voter hotline, which is 866 Our Vote, will be live staffed. So if you call, a person will actually answer and you can ask them, what are the rules for XYZ? And they can tell you it right there. And it's totally nonpartisan, uh, but it's a great thing to know that exists um, because you might get a question you don't know. And that's sometimes really intimidating, but that's okay. I get questions that I don't know, and I do a lot of this material. Um, but so it's sometimes nice to have a call a friend option. Then after the conclusion of the event, you're going to want to make sure that you get your proper forms to the regional liaison and or the Board of Elections within two days of the event. So if you do have an event that ends, up, ends at 930 p.m. It's fine if you wait till the following morning to actually drive the forms over, but we would say keep it in a 48 hour window just you know, honestly, for your own sake, it can get, things can slip your mind, especially during a, a, a busy time of the year. So uh, try to stick with that two day deadline and um, work with your regional liaison if you're having problems with that timeline. The cover sheet has very specific instructions. So once you get that, you should be able to step-by-step step know what the data submission process looks like. Um, and so you can work with your regional liaison to make a plan. Uh, we also do have mini grants uh, available, as I mentioned. We will um, send that application in the follow up email, but there's also, um, you know, you'll have to fill out a summary afterwards that basically says, here's how we spent the money and here's how many people showed up to the event. So um, if you're not sure whether something is eligible for a mini grant, apply anyway. The worst we can say is no. Um, and if, if it's not, if it is a no, we'll still tell you why. And we might know of alter, uh, alternative funding options that might be more applicable to what you want money for. So uh, definitely err on the side of, of submitting a grant request. And just a reminder of all the wonderful resources that we have. Uh, we've got swag, we've got posters, yard signs, voter and volunteer, volunteer literature, stickers, mini grants, which it goes into the pot of money's gone. We have had a couple uh, generous donors who have continued to add to the pot, which is nice because that allows us to be a little bit more flexible in what we fund. Uh, we also have lots of online toolkits and, and resource folders, training videos and webinars, and also uh, partner resources like vote411.org, National Voter Registration Day, and ACLU Voting Center, and many more. Um, so make sure that you're also, you know, again, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Uh, lots of times if you're looking for a certain type of flyer, we've already made it or someone has. Uh, so check that before you, you know, sink a bunch of time into something. Um, but yeah, just make sure that you're taking advantage of all of the resources that we have because they are, um, you know, provided through a lot of different partners. And again, hopefully that'll allow you to save some, some money and some effort. So that is all we have. Uh, if you have additional follow-up questions, uh, you can actually email Liam, which um, it actually, I'm sorry, you can email Ohio Votes general email. That's ohiovotes at cohio, C-O-H-H-I-O dot org. Uh, and we'll forward you to the right person to talk to and we can get you going. So thank you for joining. Uh, and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen.
screen <laughs> now. Uh, and I hope you all have a successful NVRD. <laughs>